trying to do with this novel? I'd gotten the, re uh, the reaction from uh, uh, from some readers to previous books that they they didn't like my my male character. Uh, I mean, that wasn't universal, but I would hear that, uh, and I would hear that from publishers as well. You know, who for whatever reason might have turned uh, uh, one of my books down, usually abroad, that they couldn't. Yeah, they character wasn't likable enough and that it's, it's a very irritating comment to to writers because <laughs> they, they don't set out to write likable characters they set out to write challenging characters so so in a way the challenge for me in this book was you know how unlikable can I make this character and still uh, keep him engaging and still go someplace interesting so so that was that was definitely there at the back of my mind uh, and I guess the uh, the bigger challenge was that uh, you know I did I did have the sense that you know as a writer I was I was respected and you know I got good reviews and and people you know I'd meet a lot of people who knew of me as a writer and thought I was probably a good one but clearly had never read me <laughs> and sort of had the feeling that for whatever reason I wasn't really for them. Uh, and it's a weird feeling as a writer because I don't write books for anyone specifically. I mean, I write it for, uh, you know, I think people who have maybe the same taste in literature as I do. But I, but I write to communicate. Uh, I write so that, you know, people will want to read my books and feel like they're getting something meaningful from them, that they're, it's illuminating their lives in some way or showing them something they hadn't thought about. Uh, and so I, I did want with this book to just sort of uh, 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 sort of grab readers a little more forcefully and say, you know, look, <laughs> I want to tell you this. I'm not quite sure what this is, but I want to take you to this place with this character and hope that when you're in that place, you, you see maybe a slightly broader slice of reality than you do in your, your daily life. So how can I do that? How can I bring readers along with me. I mean, I've always thought of, you know, Shakespeare really is my role model. I know that's, I mean, it may sound arrogant to say that, but, uh, you know, he was a guy who really, first of all, had to live by his writing, had to make sure that, you know, within the first five minutes, the audience was there with him and yet managed to sort of, uh, you know, encapsulate the whole swath of human experience in, in his work. Uh, and I think, you know, most writers have that urge that they want to reach as uh, broad a, an audience as possible while still being true to whatever message they feel or whatever uh, place they feel they're trying to get to in their work. Uh, your central character, David, he's definitely not likable, but I found him extremely compelling. He's pretty difficult. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, one of the things I found is that in some ways it's it's easier to bring readers along with a a very unlikable character than with a mildly unlikable character. Why do you think that? Uh, I think it's it's partly because we're we're fascinated by you know by characters who have that level of freedom to breach social norms. So I mean, this is your Richard the uh, Third. In a, in a in a sense. Uh, and uh, um, and it's partly because you know we have that part in ourselves. We what we, we we know we can't indulge it that that desire for some kind of total freedom, uh, and we wouldn't indulge it. Uh, but we we feel a kind of uh, simultaneous horror and thrill at seeing it indulged in in fiction. I mean, I think it's why. Uh, you know, we're we're so captivated by murder mysteries, by horror films, by by so many genres that we find in art that have very little relation to how we live our daily lives, uh, and uh, why you know villains are often very attractive to us uh, because we can, uh, at, on the one hand, sort of follow them into those dark places, even though even while we can say we are nothing like that because we are not in our in our daily lives, and yet we have that that little bit in ourselves that is simultaneously horrified and and drawn to that place. Even though he's not, you know, a role model of how any of us would live our lives, 
he is trying to get at something. You know, this book that he's working on and can't seem to finish where he's trying to understand sort of the whole flow of history and how is it that we keep reverting to these uh, moments of extreme violence and, you know, we build up civilizations and then we ruin them. Uh, you know, the, the Persians, the, the Romans, the, the British, the, I mean, every civilization goes through this kind of cycle of, of build up and destruction and we seem to remain in that pattern, you know, to the present day despite all our knowledge, despite all our science, we cannot seem to break that cycle. Uh, of violence. I mean, there are dozens of wars going on as we speak and hundreds of thousands of people being uh, uh, affected by them and you'd think that we would have reached a level of intelligence to stop that and yet we don't. Uh, and so there's, there's something in him that wants to both live in that cycle and understand it because it it feels like there's something essentially human there that isn't really being dealt with in the life he was leading uh, that is masking some kind of a truth and refusing to look at it. Are you already at work on your next project? I am. Yes, I am. Uh, can you give us a, a hint of the territory that you'll be in? Uh, it's a uh, historical novel set at the uh, turn of the 20th century, which as it happens, had a lot of similarities to the turn of the 21st century, so we wouldn't immediately think that. The novel is Sleep. I've been speaking with the author Nino Ricci, and Sleep is published by Doubleday Canada.